It's April 16th. Oh, it's... 2014. Oh. You gotta do that again. <sighs> Frickin... If I knew what you were doing, I would have gone along with it, but I didn't realize until you were halfway done. Uh, the door's not closed. Uh, <laughs> 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 Disgusted baby. Uh, <laughs> Ready for the coolest cast mm-hmm. to ever emit? Uh, Only the coolest cast submitted. Uh, <laughs> idle thumbs. <laughs> Only the worst people hosting. <laughs> I heard that Mega McCheese. It is. It is. It is April sixteenth, twenty fourteen. This is Idle Thumbs one hundred fifty four. I'm Chris Remo. It's been a long time since that goddamn face showed up. I realized I didn't know what episode it was. <laughs> I'm Jake Rodkin. And, and I'm Nick Brecken. You is are. It, is it once it's been a long time since it is, that goddamn It's 154 face. and okay. Nick Brecken's here. Yeah. Hey, Nick. I thought you were referring to me, Jake. Nick doesn't get a special mention. He's just a fucking host. Um, He's not a guest. I didn't say, I didn't say we're joined by Nick. I said, I and Nick Brecken's here. You're treating him as if we need to welcome him. Okay, sorry. Room. Press start player four. Nick Brecken's here. Except he's <laughs> player three because Sean is not here. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. As people can tell, because we introduced ourselves <clears throat> at the beginning. Yes. Sorry. Since since Nick is, in fact, here, I want to talk about uh, Civilization After Earth. I want to talk about some problems that I have with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Nick's here. Uh, you mean... Is it, you're the, is it you're the only one or is it Beyond Earth? Me, or Beyond Earth. Yeah. Because you're the... Uh, oh, right. The other one's what? Shyamalan? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I want yeah. to talk about mm-hmm. Civilization Titan AE. Right. <laughs> well, you're the only one, one other one on this podcast who I think would probably play that a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the Rob Zachney actually wrote an article that people should read about oh, this. Oh, I think, was it like um, just the blog post one today? Um, or recently? It was, re- it was like in the last couple of days. Yeah, he, about like, differences. Well, because it was announced and it was, you know, obviously drew comparisons to Alpha Centauri. Uh, Alpha Centauri. Well, the yeah. team themselves sort of said. They, they didn't, they didn't. Which they, was well, they, they can't say that it's Alpha Centauri, but they also sort of like mm. the phrase inspired by Alpha Centauri showed up in official language once. Right. Oh, it did, really? Yeah. Yeah, it did. But like at, at the a same tweet time, or something. At the same time, the interesting thing about Rob's article is that he. I think in an interview that he conducted kind of like, you know, pin them down and said like, is this that game or not? And, or, you know, like, are you attempting to create a sequel to that game or is it radically different? And they basically said, well, it's not nearly as pessimistic. It's not really the same thing. It's more like a Civ five expansion. Yeah. That's and, what I would have guessed. Um, he kind of like nailed them to the like wall on it. It was really interesting. Like I was, oh, really? I was, maybe I was, maybe I didn't read this. Article. <clears throat> yeah, no, it was really interesting. But, um, yeah, they more or less said that it's not, you know, and I didn't, I, I can't really speak to Elvis and Tara. I wasn't, like, I, I remember playing it a couple of times, but I, I was not the guy that played that for a million years and know everything about it. Um, yeah. So I know that what made it interesting was that it was pessimistic and it was, um, you know, a, uh, you know, they had a lot of interesting mechanics like making your own units and things like that, which I don't think this is going to do. Um, have they said what it's going they to have do? A, like, yes. make, make your own faction thing. I thought I read somewhere. Yeah, there's a uh, there's stuff like that. There, the, like a lot of the um, the press centered around just the idea of uh, different yeah different races all like colonizing a planet and then um, 
the planet itself being somewhat of an adversary and like just having a huge phase of the game where I mean that that is like Alpha Centauri influence for sure. Right, because what the planet I think yeah. was actually like a thing in Alpha Centauri where it would like fight back or something. I, I don't I don't really remember, but um yeah, it seemed like that game to an extent, but um they did more or less admit that it's it's not it's still kind of retaining the sort of optimistic viewpoint of Civ 5 as a default which is interesting to me like after watching the trailer for this game and getting really excited about it because I think everything that Firaxis does now is just generally exciting uh, I went back and played a ton of Civ 5 because that's just what I do and it is like looking at it from that perspective it is like a strangely optimistic Civ game. I'm and fine with that, though. I know you are, but yeah. the one thing I will say is that when you look at it and play a full round of it, with, like basically analyzing it from that critique, you mean Civ um, Five, for example? Yeah, yeah. It it does sort of fall apart in a in a certain sense. Like Nick's only talking about Civ Five right now. I'm only talking about Civ Five. Yeah. Um, like it doesn't attempt to model realistic representations of things like military industrial complexes, or you know, mm -hmm. like. The, like I, right now in my in my round, I'm um, basically um, in a g enormous like great war essentially. But I'm just researching stuff in the background, and like the fact that the entire like science component of the game is entirely separate from everything else, and you don't really receive bonuses. Like war doesn't really factor into any of that stuff. It is extremely optimistic. Like, it's not... Like, you can't... Like, in Civ Four, people will correct me when I am totally wrong about this, but I'm fairly certain that when you took over cities, you could raise them and receive, you know, bonuses, like, instant bonuses for doing that, right? Mm -hmm. In Civ Five, taking over a city, like, going to war in general is, like, extremely taxing. Like, there's yeah, no... Sure. There's no quick version of just, like, taking over a city. And, yeah. So, like, when you look at it from then just an actual, like, historical perspective, it's not really attempting to model like <clears throat> it's not especially by era it's not attempting to do anything um and, and that's definitely and, true and five. yeah i don't know it's interesting like i i agree with you that it doesn't bother me as a game player but when you look at it from that perspective um yeah it is it does it does kind of i think that's a totally fair fair criticism and i do think yeah. that civ, five, civ 4 is a stronger game than civ 5 definitely but also one of the th reasons i'm excited for beyond earth is that i feel like in making it a game that is not technically a sequel to an existing civilization game, even though it's obviously heavily modeled after Civ Five, um, I'm hoping that it can have to deal less with direct comparisons to like a pre a prior Civ game. Sure, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I, well, yeah, I think that's one of the that was one of the the things with Civ Five is it was clearly meant to play as it like. They were attempting to distance themselves from the Civ series in some respects. Like, I think it was yeah. a deliberate attempt to do something yeah, new. Yeah, to reinvent a bunch of stuff. Um, and then, you know, by extension, they're going to leave some things on the side of the road that people really liked about Civ, which is fine. Um, but, yeah, I agree that I think that, yeah, this is this is a decent opportunity for them to yeah get away from some of that. I It sounds <clears> like... Also, I don't know. It sounds like in Rob, I just it, like in Rob's piece, which I did actually realize I read. I just didn't take mm. quite as you're right that he he has a sort of very um, skeptical yeah. opinion toward it. Which that, I yeah. see what you mean now, but um, he's he he's he infers that the game is going to be just a lot less about warfare in general, right? Which again, I'm totally fine with, and I feel like if that if they go into it with that as like an understood pillar of the game. Mm. Which it's tougher to do in a Civ game because the Civ games have for 20 years yeah. been about, in large part, like world domination. Um, I feel like that could be interesting. Like they've talked about the notion well, of like completion quests rather than yeah. like traditional victory conditions. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but like it might be interesting to try. There are there are quests in the game right now, actually, um, weirdly enough. Like the city states give you quests. I think that might be new with the recent expansion. Oh, well, um, I know that stuff. I played oh, a lot sorry, of the expansion. I, yeah. I was talking about in the new game. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. they're saying for victory rather than. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're saying yeah. to actually win the game, you, there might be like victory quests. Which, oh, sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I but no, I, I know the, the city state stuff I actually like yeah. in Civ Five. Like I know some people didn't. I don't know. I feel like Civ Five is. I didn't at first, and then now that I'm playing it again, I am embracing it, and I actually really like is it. Is that because yeah. of changes that were made over the expansion packs, or is it just Maybe. because your perception of it is different well, after the, time? I, as I recall, in the in the most in the like big expansion pack to Civ Five, 
what is the most recent one? Gods and Kings? Yes. Or is there another one after that? I can't no. remember. Uh, no. No, yeah. It's I think the, Gods and Kings was, was the... It's, that was the first one, and then there was a second one. It was something beneath... Or starts with a B. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. The second one was the one that I liked a lot. I think... Brave New World? Brave, Brave New, New World. World. Yeah. It. That one beefed up City States a lot, I think. Mm-hmm. And I, I already liked City States as a <laughs> yeah. sort of concept, and then it right. made them more interesting in the... But anyway, the thing I was going to say about Civ Five is I feel like Civ Five is... Or the Civ series in general, I feel like, has always had this, like, odd, even trade-off of, like, new ideas and then refinement, where I feel like Civ 1 and Civ 3 are probably not as strong, and 5 maybe, like, although we don't have a Civ 6 yet, but, like, Civ 1 and 3 are probably not as strong as Civ 2 and 4, right. which are kind of <clears throat> seen as, like, the strong, um, I actually never played Civ 3, but but I played all the other ones, and, uh, it feels like they kind of every other entry bite off a lot of like big stuff that mm-hmm. really, really true. pays off. When I think Civ 3 was the it. first to start to model things like culture and they didn't, you know, I, I could be wrong, but I, I believe that that's the case. Yeah. And I think they just did it in a very clumsy way, whereas Civ 4 then kind of made the, mm-hmm. like, they made culture. The even analogous. number civs are the, oh, I see what you were trying to do there, civilizations. Where, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it would be great if they went back to something like that for this game, this expansion, because it feels like if you're going to do something that de-emphasizes um, the military aspect yeah. then it you know i feel like they should start to beef up those mechanics but like the yeah because no, the culture stuff in civ 4 was fantastic and yeah, yeah, playing five again i'm just like oh god i wish that i had the same sort of culture boundaries that they were doing because that was really smart i love culture boundaries yeah yeah um, it's fucking good uh what was i gonna say oh yeah i'm hoping also that all of the like faction specific stuff pays off in the new game because that was also a really strong part of Alpha Centauri. Like, yeah. But it's also just to, not to rag on Civ Five because I still think it's a really good game, but it is one of the things that I don't think Civ Five does very well. No, I, I agree. Um, that and like World Wonders, all that stuff just feels like really Although kind of pushed I, I liked, in the background. Yeah. I liked the religion stuff in Civ Five. Yeah. No, the religion I think is actually an improvement over four. Like the religion but... felt like an example of how to do faction style things in an interesting way. Mm hmm. Because you kind of created your religion over the course of yeah. millennia. Like I was listening to this interesting. Well, it's Civ Four was just like you founded Christianity, and then that was it. Like, right, it, no, was just, know, it was know. basically well, just Civ Four just makes a different statement just, about that stuff. Right? It does. It's like this it's, shit is interchangeable. Right. Um, but I was I was listening to a really interesting like it was a fresh <clears> air <throat> interview with a guy who wrote a book that's coming out on Easter, and it's about like the historical Jesus, and I can't remember what it's called. I think I heard the same interview. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was, it's about like how the conception of Jesus by Christians has evolved over the past, past two millennia. Oh, it's about mm. the, the fundamental thrust of the book is how Jesus did not consider himself to be a God. Right. And like how that belief structure evolved and was in large part responsible for, or like allowed Christianity to spread in the way it did. And like listening to this interview, like really reminded me how much religions like evolve yeah. over centuries and <clears throat> millennia and are not like the doctrine is not, we all know this, I, I think generally speaking, but like he was just going through it beat by beat. And I'm like, man, I like how they kind of reflect that in a <clears throat> less specific way in Civ five yeah. by having you build up the, like the tenets of this thing over, mm-hmm. yeah, that's over really the course cool. of a playthrough. Yeah. Um, yeah. anyway, I hope this game is good. I'll play it no matter what. <laughs> I'm yep. going to enjoy it no matter Same. what. Same. Guaranteed. I yeah. knew when that, the first thing that came out was that just picture of the box of the guy looking yeah, out of the space out, station like and a planet behind it. Portal, it's like, yeah, portal. And then it yeah. said civilization at the top. I was like, well, this is, <laughs> Chris is, yep. is done now. Yeah. Yep. And there, I, basically every Civ cutscene is like my favorite game cutscene, mm-hmm. essentially. Cause they're also, even the, even the ones in the games that are themselves like, um, less optimistic the cutscenes are always so like grand and yeah like inspiring um and even if the game like even if the games reflect that to different extents and in different ways i just like that there's a development team who every time they make a game they're like okay like whether or not this is like just sort of 
boundlessly optimistic or whether it's cynical in some way, mm. it's going to recognize like the breadth of accomplishment mm-hmm. over the course of human civilization. And like, that's such a rad thing yeah. to want to represent in a video game. Yep. Um, and like the trailers always reflect that. And I always find it really cool. Yeah. Like I totally will cop to just getting like, that is like, um, God, the, yeah, just sentimental. It's like catnip. You know what I mean? Like right. I, I like it on well, a level the, um, that is like instinctual, not like, intellectually considered i'm just like i just love this somebody took the civ 5 trailers like i think like the press trailers Mm -hmm. or maybe it's the actually maybe what they've done i think actually what they've done is they've done cutscenes to start like civ 5 and then the two expansions and now the space one but like they all cover like a certain chunk of civilization and like somebody took them and made like a big super cut and it's fucking insane. Like it's wait, what? Oh, I don't understand. Oh, you mean like the, yeah, yeah. The, the original Civ five opening you're saying like only covers this, yeah, these yeah, periods yeah. of history. And then they've, they're like, is it like they're filling in the gaps in the different ones or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, somebody what, made what are, some kind if of, if you edit incident. together Civ five cutscene plus gods and Kings cutscene plus brave new world oh, cutscene yeah, yeah. plus oh, oh, the new oh. space one. If you fold them together, oh, you can shit. make a fucking huge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I didn't understand what you were describing. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's, it's so really at some point, so wait, what did they do with the audio? Um, I don't remember. Like it's been, it's like, I didn't watch, I'm sure somebody's taken the, the recent one. Like I, I watched the version that was like the, the, the first three. Right. Um, if, but if, I, no, but I mean, but I'm saying like, did the voiceover, did they just blend the voiceover together or what did they? Who's um, to say? Yeah, I think it is. They just, they just stitched them together. They didn't like yeah. redo the narration. No, I think the narrator is actually, this, I think the narrator is consistent between. No, them. I understand that. Oh, I, sorry. I Cause he talks either. over the whole thing. But if Firaxis makes enough civilization games in their modern incarnation, someone could just make Chris Ramo's dream feature film out of <laughs> enough openings. Well, someone, someone yeah. suggested – I don't think they're going to do this. But someone suggested Firaxis take the paradox approach and make Civ Five saves importable into oh, man. Uh, Beyond Earth. That would be fucking good. Which would be rad. That would be super cool. I don't know what that would mean because the game <laughs> takes place on a different planet. But right, it would still be a cool thing, even if it just fed in little variables. Well, if you have, <laughs> if whichever your civilization, if you create a space victory, if that save uh, somehow ends up just being on that planet for some reason, like if just there's this weird backstory to the <laughs> right to the saga of mankind that is just like, yeah, I'm just, just oh, also anyway, the Zulus were just total badasses back on Earth. <laughs> yep, I guess we're them. Kind of. Anyway, we have this weird fucking kind of uh, (laughs) semi-arbitrary religion that I guess evolved organically. (laughs) And we still really have these racist jokes about this one (laughs) city-state. I don't know what a city-state is either. (laughs) God, it would be awesome, and they're not going to do this, but the best would be if, like, Earth religions were still maintained in this game. Oh, like how, like how, like how Judaism Jews is in are Dune? in Dune, which is yeah. like one of my favorite things. Yeah. This is a really dumb question that I will now ask. Are there aliens in this game? I don't know. I saw references uh, was to Alpha like... Was Alpha Centauri all people? Yeah, but there were alien species. Yeah, it seems like the planet itself is... Okay, but alien, there's not... But there, I don't It's know. not like... It doesn't go Star Trek where they replace <clears throat> different civilizations and like races or whatever on Earth. No, but there was, like, so. with, there was like, in an interview there <clears throat> was like made reference to like races or something, and I didn't know what it. Well, meant. you yeah, you create a race, but is there? It's but when the, they say it's, race, they don't mean like a they species. mean a, right. They mean a race from Earth that is colonizing a planet. Okay. Like the fiction is mean that like a society race seems like a weird word for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you well, I think within that race, race. You, you determine what society, like there are different pillars. Like I think there are, what like, do you a mean? Of, what do you mean when you say race then? I don't understand what you mean. Like give me an example of a race that, that would map to currently. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know what they mean. Either. You mean like humans or do you mean like white people? I, I think they're talking about ethnicity is what they're talking That's about. That's bizarre. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. I didn't read it that closely, but I think that like, yeah, I, I don't know what it actually means from a gameplay standpoint either, but I think that the, um, I don't. Well, I just something I saw. What is yeah, that? yeah. I don't know. It's <laughs> weird. Like, um, there were a lot of just like futurist, like um, you know, societal. Because that is not that an optimistic future if we're all still splitting ourselves up by fucking ethnicity. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's hilarious. I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, you love the spore creature creator. <laughs> I think they refer to everything as factions here. I, I saw just, race there, as well, though. I know. I saw there's one interview where like, race. race was mentioned. <laughs> and I don't, I just can't, I don't know. What, I couldn't figure out what the context was. Huh. It was in this huge, like, seven page PC Gamer interview. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm sure they're not going to make a game that is 
weirdly, blatantly, overtly racist at that level. So that's my suspicion. Mm-hmm. Um, Good. Yeah. I'm glad we're. <laughs> But yeah, I know that's a we're getting question, to the truth. I... <laughs> well, I, I just suspect they won't. I don't know, right? Yep. When I first saw the art Who can game, say? having known nothing about Alpha Centauri at all, I was wondering to myself, is this now supposed to be basically Star Trek? Which it sounds like it's not, which is good. I hope it's not. As far as, like, yeah, you you're, I mean, you I, play, you could play as the Image of Earth, the, but you could also trailer, be the trailer the looks green like, ones with gills. Or, yeah, the trailer looks know. like near future, yeah. just regular ass humans need a place to live now. Because they show like the pyramids and shit are in the, the trailer, you know what I mean? Like, they, it's, it, the trailer makes it look like a very direct, because civilization right. games always end, if you end with the science victory, they end with you blasting yeah. off and traveling to Alpha Centauri, and that's like where the original game Alpha Centauri right. picks up. Um, I mean, well, it doesn't really pick up directly there, but like, I've always imagined that to be the implication. I remember I, I read because I I never followed this stuff. I, I played Civ One and that's it. But that Alpha Centauri doesn't have the civilization name attached because when they made that, they did not have the rights they to Alpha Centauri. It's a Firaxis game. I know. But, and know. now they're making what is, for some purposes, a spiritual successor to Alpha Centauri. But it's called civilization. But they can't use the word Alpha <laughs> Centauri because they don't have the rights nope. to it. Uh huh. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's weird. Good work, those guys. Yeah. So that yeah. As long as they don't fly there and then find, like, <clears throat> weird scuttling aliens. Okay, so I guess each game starts with a different nation-based sponsor from Earth, providing gameplay bonuses as well as... Oh, really? As like, player actual, tr- like, real countries? I guess, oh, as well as player... Canada trans- always so you should, the arms. You should so be you able should to import... Totally you, you should totally be able to do that, That would be awesome. Yeah. I bet you... Eh, I bet they're going to announce that. God, I bet that would be, be fucking good, but... Yeah, and then I guess you take, like, a what? spaceship, cargo, and colonists, and then start your civilization, and then... There are affinities, so civilizations have different affinities now, and like one of them is harmony, which try to adapt their DNA to fit the planet. Oh yeah, and there's like and purity, which supremacy, is purity. Yeah, pur- purity is the humanist thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, cool. I don't know. Yeah, given how how on PC and like this is not going to come out on consoles, right? So, Civ Five wasn't a console I think, thing. No, I think they gave up on that. On that. Yeah. Yeah. Given though that. Everyone stores all their save data in the cloud at this point. Anyway, it seems like that's true. A game of this scope, they could potentially be able to manage that just through your Steam account. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that'd be awesome. Or your UPlay account. It's not an Ubisoft game. It seems like you want to maximize the market to your <laughs> on. <laughs> Log in to claim this humble <laughs> save game. Civilization Beyond Earth, first non Ubisoft game to. <laughs> utilize you play yep. <laughs> most questionable decision possibly ever made in the video game industry as long as it also uses the you draw <laughs> from thq yep. weird yep speaking of ubisoft i got a sweet seg yeah. going here oh i was excited about the alternate universe where this oh. where this civ 5 game was so only drastically playable, underfunded that only they had playable to like, in Nolan yeah. Bushnell's concept restaurant. <laughs> uh, you wink. You you wink. <sighs> Maybe it oh works with all of these God. features, but it's because they couldn't scrape the budget together. So it's like <laughs> this game is coming it's out. It's our vision. What the hell? God, it's fucking bean counters. It's coming out. You play with the you draw. Oh, I see. What you're saying they're playable and you wink. They're fucking subsidized by all these. Also, <laughs> it's coming out on Ouya. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. Only ooh, ooh, yeah, you wink exclusive. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, ooh, you, you wink, wink. You draw, you play exclusive. <laughs> if you affix this custom RFID oh, chip to your Ouya and bring it into a you wink and plug it into the little digital jukebox menu robot, uh, the Civilization Five game will appear. It will notice the state of the actual future that exists and uninstall itself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, your segue. Anyway, this game's a fundamentally optimistic view of our, <laughs> right. our future as human beings. <laughs> that is just the equivalent. That is that like that is spoken in the tone of Jeff Keighley surrounded by Doritos and Mountain Dew right. with a bemused expression on yeah. his face in front of a Halo poster. Right. Instead, it's a 
person with a fucking U draw in his lap in a U wink <laughs> with you an Ouya wink. and a, <laughs> fucking and a double wink. size like hang from the ceiling on fishing line uh, GameStop box of this game. Right. Yeah. U wink was just what the restaurant with basically like a screen that you could order from. Yeah, it was a right? restaurant with like. Touch so that's just like ATMs every Applebee's now. It's just Wait, like really? every Applebee's has that. That's just like yeah, like Applebee's all, licensed like U wink technology. <laughs> right. From yeah. Nolan Bushnell, creator of the Atari. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Tons. he also create Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah, oh, he? he did. No oh, way. Yeah. I never knew that. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does he, did Ewink also have weird, creepy animatronic bands and stuff? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Didn't, you mean like a robot band? Did I, <laughs> did Nintendo own Chuck E. Cheese? Didn't some major game company own Chuck E. Cheese for a long time? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Atari. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I don't think so. I hope Nintendo did. Anyway. Yeah, so that because guy Chuck E. Cheese had games. The, restaura- the s- most strangely named restaurants. Basically, in our history, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> Mega and McCheese. I think Chuck E. Cheese used to have a different name that was that was more gross. Um, yes, that's it tough. was. It was. Yes, it did. Um, oh God, what was it? Uh, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese's slogan is "Where awesome parents go." That is really <laughs> what? that is really reaching. Wow. That is really that's just, des- that is well, a desperate uh, also Chuck E. Cheeses. Yeah, oh yeah. Just even more Chuck E. Cheeses, Chuck e. Cheeses is what you said when you were uh, a child. Oh, it was right. formerly Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. Pizza Time Theater, yes. Yeah. Which is disturbing in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it was founded by Nolan Bushnell. The brand is that. represented by Chuck E. Cheese and Anthropomorphic Mouse. Yeah. Um Chuck E. Cheeses makes sixty million dollars in profits a year. Or no, wait, that's a quarter. <laughs> oh, no, wait, it's a day. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> like, I can't tell. The, the Wikipedia has not been updated since 2009 about this, about its actual mm-hmm. revenue and income. He, what if Bushnell oh, purchased it, was it from in 1977. Warner. Yeah, anyway, whatever. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? We must have started with Atari games. It was founded in Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater by Nolan Bushnell in 1977. This information and more is available at wikipedia. dot <laughs> org. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. I had a anyway, weird. Can't yeah. wait to play uh, Beyond Earth. I played that Jurassic place. Park game a lot of Chuck E. Cheese. What Jurassic Park game? Also, the Simpsons arcade. Oh yeah. That's where I played the Simpsons. Yeah. So if we're talking about weird meta discussions about our technological future, that feels like it's also a valid and the games industry. That feels like it's also a valid segue into uh, what you were going to talk about. Oh yeah, it's true. I played Assassin's Creed Four, which did you beat it? I didn't. It's a shocking fact about a game that I played. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what to. I, like, I didn't know. I I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. What am I? Why was I playing this game? I don't know. I guess like Assassin's oh, Creed. Why not? Well, why not? Yeah, it's like, you know, I like open world games. I like Assassins. Um, I like Assassins. You, I like Creed. professing a Creed here I like, and there. Yeah, I enjoy these things. So I thought, all right, I will play a game that is a big budget AAA game. I haven't done it in a while. And I had a weekend where I just wanted to basically, you know, turn my brain off and, you know. On what system yeah. do you play this game? Um, uh, PS4, actually. Oh, a current gen yeah. experience. Yeah, yes. Yes. Um, Keeping up with those Joneses, those video Joneses. Um, but I don't know. I So the weird thing, like, this is a fucking, like, I was not prepared for what happened to me playing this game. Are you saying game. you were not ready for I was PlayStation not ready. experience? Yeah, I wasn't. Okay. Just making sure. I wanted to gauge your preparedness. God, I wonder how many people remember that these days. Uh, you are not ready. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was Mortal Kombat, right? That's just the original. That's the oh, that was the PlayStation. Right? That's the launch of the PS One. The PS One, yeah, 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 right. Um, the PSX. Yeah. <laughs> Why was it called the PSX? I don't know. Weird. The GCN. I think people just wanted a third letter in the acronym to make it sound more like a real thing. But then, so they but then there was a real PSX that was like a weird. It looked like a three D audio visual device, yeah. right? Weird. Anyway, I played Assassin's Creed. Then there was 4. the PS One. <laughs> PS O N E. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Which was like a mm-hmm. device that they released. Mm-hmm. And then there was the Xbox One. <laughs> and then there was the X Bone. And then there was the Ape Extreme. <laughs> and then there was um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, then there was Assassin's uh, Creed Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I like. So I hear you play like a, as a video game tester in this game. You do. It's really weird. 
Okay. So I, I started playing the game and obviously expecting that there would be that weird frame story of like, there's yeah, the animus. You're there's like the, the animus thing. Warehouse. You're, yeah, you're a dude in a white place. You know, it's like really white. <laughs> but in fact, the white place a was white a video a game place. studio. <laughs> oh, so an accurate white place. Right. Still. So you, you like, I don't even remember how it begins, but basically you walk through the doors of this place. And this woman who is speaking in, like, you know, she's bilingual and she's speaking in a French accent. And she says, like, welcome to, you know, Animus Industries or whatever. Uh, it's your first day on the job, so let me show you around. And she's just, like, pointing at stuff. And then she just points to a big, like, LCD screen that's, like, enormous. It, like, covers a wall. And a huge, like, key art image of Assassin's Creed Liberation appears. And she says, maybe you've seen our recent experience, Assassin's Creed Liberation or whatever. Or it's just called Wait, Liberation. Was that the PSP Sorry, it's just called, yeah. Yeah, it was the most recent game. And I was like, weird, huh? I wonder what this is about. She's like, anyway, let's go upstairs and meet some of your coworkers. And there's just a bunch of guys around with like their fucking iPads. And then she's like, here, here, here's your like, you know, your uh, animus proprietary pad thing. And she hands you it and you just have an iPad in your like first person view that you can access at all times. So she's like, okay. Is there also a second screen experience that you can link to your real iPad? <laughs> <laughs> if not, I don't see the purpose of playing this game, but I would no. be surprised if it was. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So she takes you in to this office building and walks you over to a cube and you sit down and she says, <laughs> sorry. I lost my Chris- telephone. <laughs> By sitting on a couch. I don't know how that is possible. Actually. Chris is just baffled. Okay. He's been baffled by staring apart the couch. How can I operate under these conditions? I got it. I can't. Chris found his phone. The content <laughs> podcast. Fine. This is the dumbest uh, episode. Anyway. What? So, so I walked huh? up. Huh? Weird. The uh, dumbest episode? Yeah. Uh... So anyway, how could that be? She brings you into the office and she sits you down and she's like, anyway, so what we need you to do is play through the latest experience. Is it's Assassin's about Creed 4? it's about being a pirate uh, <laughs> and you're like this guy Edward and anyway enjoy and like so and that it, it's it just segs into fucking Wait, okay. the actual game. So uh, but then so what do you do? No, I have to ask a question. Now. Oh yeah, okay. I got to interject <laughs> yeah. because yeah. When you say this, d- does she still give you the fucking Animus VR rig, or is your guy no! sitting down at a Dell? He's in front of a dual monitor setup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you sit down in your cube. So he has like he has a Wintel compatible uh-huh. machine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you sit down in your like open air office cube setting. You know, I mean, it's not a cube, but it's just it's a station in an open. You know, it looks mm-hmm. like a goddamn game developer, and you. <laughs> You start playing the game, and you're a pirate, and you're a pirate for, like, I don't know, 30 minutes, and then it sucks you back out, as it does, but as it's doing that, a screen pops up, and it says, mission one complete, 90% whatever, please rate this mission, and then you have to give it, like, a star rating out of five stars. Uh Uh-huh. And that's part of the in-world fiction, is that you're this guy playing these levels right. and rating them. So but in a- actuality, these, these ratings are going back to Ubisoft <laughs> to receive data about like how you liked the mission. <laughs> so you're it's not, insane! You're not, you're not playing as a game tester finding bugs, you're actually in a, you're a focus tester. Yeah, we're a focus, we're a focus tester, tester, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, what you're doing is it's your first day on the job, and so you're focus testing their their most like oh, so their it's, beta. It's it is your, the actual yeah. move of being a new person yeah. in the games. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, hey, yeah. I got some fresh, fresh eyes. eyes. On it. Like, yeah. <laughs> check and so, out. like, okay. maybe like two hours into the game, she's like, you know, we get you get to a, a little uh, uh, animus industries whatever thing, and she's like, yeah. So I got to give you this goal now. Go up to the top and talk to like the CEO. And you go up to the top of this like skyscraper. It's like thirty stories. And as you're ascending, you see that you're just like it just hits like the open view, you know, glass, just like insane vista. And it's just Montreal. And you get to the top, and the like you walk into this guy, like the CEO's office, and he's just got key art from Assassin's Creed Four all over his walls. And he's just like he's on the phone with some guy talking about like their next game. Yeah, 
and he's like, oh, anyway, like, uh, thanks for being our employee. I'm really glad that you're uh, joining the team. Anyway, go back down and continue writing the game. And you just, that's just... This so what? the escapism of this game also extends to the notion that you would be hired as a QA tester in a major corporation <laughs> and would be introduced to the CEO on your first day. Right. That's but another... It, like, <laughs> yeah. Tempers it by him apparently not caring that much about you. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh-huh. What is I, the point just, of this? As as a person, as a game developer that was just looking to spend a weekend away from thinking about <laughs> making games, to be suddenly in this position where the entire like story of this game is being a game, like I just so it wait, was incredible. Is, is is it also fictionally true that this company was supposed to have developed Assassin's Creeds one through three and Brotherhood and Revolutions? I don't. Whatever the hell they're all. Do called? they talk about having another studio in Europe that develops the <laughs> odd number of the ones? I don't. I wasn't paying that. I wasn't paying attention. But they do do like they talk about like the first Assassin's Creed guy, and like I think basically like they've just gotten. I think the fiction is just that the, that guy like the stuff that he did in that game, like his experience still or whatever. Totally fictional. It's just inside some fucking video game that these other people made. No, 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 no. That guy was a real guy. He experienced, like, the experiences of whatever, like, Wait, so are the they Crusades. Wait, on itself now where his real life experience is? He is now like, let's monetize this shit. No, no, no. There, oh, okay. At one point, you find, like, video footage on a PC of that guy's, like, corpse because he dies in... Oh, spoiler. He dies in, like, Assassin's Creed <laughs> 1, I guess. man dies. Oh, Animus um, Man in the first game? Animus Man dies. But, like, he... Like, the stuff that he did is, like, the foundation for their company because, like, now... They've evolved to the par- to the place where they can Wait, just so, sell these so they experiences. Released, like Assassin's Creed Three, and everyone's like, "Whoa, what's this a sequel to? Uh, this weird classified <laughs> uh, psycho well, they don't call psychological them assassins. experiment." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. like, well, if this one's called Assassin's Creed Four, they must have released three other consumer. I think products. that in the, in the world, it's just called whatever Black Flag. It's called Liberation. liberation it's called yeah. Black Flag. It's called they, oh. what they do is the the colon <laughs> is the name of their game. The, everything on the left side of the colon is it's, our it's, game. Uh, you see, uh, left side of the colon, uh, our, universe, our world. A company releases. Oh, you pass less, through the colon. Okay, this is less <laughs> fucked up is, than I thought you meant it was. <laughs> Passing I mean, through it's the colon, so absurd. But I thought you meant inside Assassin's Creed Four, there is a game called Assassin's <laughs> Creed Four, which is itself supposed to be the sequel <laughs> no, to no, the no. games Assassin's Creed Three. Well, that's no, going to be the next one where you well, no, play inside the guy playing as the inside guy. our Assassin's Creed Four is a game called Black Flag. Yeah, but not called Assassin's Creed Four, right? But when they get bored of this shit and it's on Assassin's Creed Seven, <laughs> yeah, then you will play as the guy who's looking through the memories of the game tester. <laughs> that's it's, probably it's, actually just a fucking Creed twist 7. of the end of this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. it probably then goes. Oh, my distant ancient relative was a video <laughs> game tester, <laughs> but he was also had an animus. Rate animus this experience I mean, one star out of five. This game's been out for months now, so everyone in the world is just looking at us, going, "Fuck you, shut up." Oh yeah, no, this is. I was you know hesitant to actually. No, bring it's it fine because but... I had heard that this was the case, but I also was probably not ever going to play this game, so I just right. wanted to have the opportunity to hear what the fuck is going well, on. Well, it was, it was it. crazy to me because I had not heard anything about it, and it was just the thing that I, in a yeah. million years, did not expect. Did not. It's weird. <laughs> it's a really weird thing. So did, I don't know. So did the fu- it's probably so less story, weird to people who aren't. So the in actual the game story that happens in the Black Flag game inside Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is not supposed to carry any narrative weight or be real? No, it does because it was something that actually happened. You're just living out that memory as a person who has now like experiencing right. the packaged form of it. So, or the, oh, so the idea okay. then is So they're the, just to the, people in that world who are just normal people, they're selling this like Right. Precarious experience. They're packaging a it. True story. Yeah. A sick pirate assassin. <laughs> They're slapping on a plastic lunchbox, Chris. Yeah. It's I like just... that a lot, though. That the like it feels. It's it's hard to know without any of us having completed the game. Yes. And with the rest of the internet having completed the game. Yeah. But from where it's it is at the start, it just feels like the team who have made all these games got sick of all of their lore and said. Okay, what actually happened is the people in the universe also got sick of it, and they also then just monetized I mean, the shit out of it, and that's the story of the game now. Yeah, I honestly uh, like... Register a Uplay account. <laughs> yeah, please, please. No you draw detected game <laughs> closing. It does um, ask you to register a Uplay account every time you play the game. It's hilarious. Anyway, I didn't bring it up because... inside the game inside I the game? I hope so. It's just called. Your guy sits down his desk to register. If that guy is nagged to register, <laughs> oh, no, he's just, just, he's just down and just says, Please "Do register. I?" Uh, and then the lady's like, "Oh no, we haven't uh, enabled you playing these bills yet." He goes, "Oh, thank fucking Christ!" And then he, <laughs> and then he starts playing the game. 
This is all DRM free. Seventy five percent of the way through the game, you have to now register a UPlay account because right. they've hooked up those systems. <laughs> Oh, man. And then you assassinate the man who designed it. (laughs) It's just the final guy. Got my own idea for a level, guys. God, if one of the levels in the game, if one of the like pirate levels in the game is just like shitty gray box, like, like (laughs) a mid one where you can get all the money and all the power ups. (laughs) If one of them's just the like just the test stupid level. test level where you have yeah. everything, maybe it is. It probably already is in the game. Right. All well, jokes, when you load into the game, you run around in just like a weird gray. Well, that box already happens in all the assassins. Yeah, screens. I know, but it, but like in this For version, reason, it feels like right. Yeah, but yeah, you what you want is the structure of this game to then like it fucking might. Given that they have this conceit, who knows what it does? Everyone else in the world does, but. <laughs> My hope and dream would be that it would start Charlie Kaufmaning itself. Like, it would start doing an oh, adaptation yeah. turn right. where just, yeah, like, yeah, the yeah, events yeah. of the game... Stuff start bleeding into yeah. each other, yeah. I mean, how how jokey you get with it or not, where it's, like, the marketing guy pitches the actual ending of the game, and that ends up being what it fucking is. Like, right. I don't yeah, know, yeah, like, the, weird... The end of the frame story also. Like, yeah, just yeah. this right. weird meta story yeah. where the pirate's life also yeah. just turns into this crazy, stupid, wish fulfillment... Uh, power fantasy thing like 300 million times more than it ever has been before and the ceo and creative director are displaced and moved to special thanks <laughs> yeah at uh, the end of- <laughs> god <laughs> the credits at the end of the game are just your character's name listed in every position right <laughs> at the end of the actual real game is that <laughs> yeah it's probably not what it is probably not but no anyway. because if they did that then the thing about that that would be interesting and terrible is if they had a game where you're playing through what are ostensibly real memories but you're inside this commercial organization that's repackaging them and then like the corporate and marketing interests are modifying the contents of what is ostensibly a real thing that you're playing right. through mm-hmm. that would then also contribute to the assassin's creed like meta lore and people who are really into it for that would go insane <laughs> because the implication would be that history has yeah, in fact right. changed in- by inaccurate. malicious third yeah, they're, they're retconning themselves. Yeah, so then the next yeah. game can then go back to being serious because you've uncovered the conspiracy that you in fact can alter the recording of human right. history. Right. Uh, so that's probably what the next then, Assassin's Creed is. Then you can download the DLC though and it'll give you the real ending. Uh, or it just fucking jumps off the cliff like, and the next one is co-branded with Saints Row. Like what if they <laughs> different directions? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's weird. How much of this did you play? Um, more than I thought that I would. Uh, I think four or five hours, maybe. Oh, okay. I I might continue playing it. I'm not. I didn't bring it up to say that it was a bad game. It's actually not bad. It's pretty good. I enjoy playing it. Cool. It's a well designed open world game. Mm-hmm. I like sailing around. It's very Wind Waker. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. You don't have to kill dudes. You can just sneak around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I've enjoyed most of the time I've spent with Assassin's Creed games, even though they're totally fucking batshit. Yeah. Uh, no, they're batshit, but this one is so batshit that it actually is, right. like, No, 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 that's the way about. you go. If you're making a game that's, like, <clears throat> the story just goes off the rails, fucking go off the rails. Yeah. Just go for it. If you're gonna any, like, if you're, you know, like, don't fool yourself, right? Like, if you're making a thing that's totally nuts, just go for it. Yep. Doesn't mean I'll necessarily always like it. Like, I could never get into Saints Row, but, like... You might as well, right? Like, that's what people like about those games. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, you guys play any games? Let's take a break. Okay. Yeah. Thanks again to our sponsor, Brave Wave, a video game-oriented music label uh, that recently released the album In Flux, which pairs up a bunch of Japanese music composers and Western uh, video game music composers to collaborate on a bunch of tracks. Um, we've talked about them the last few weeks. Like we like it a lot. Our listeners have been really into it. Um, if you go to store.bravewave.net and use the uh, discount code video games, you can get 10% off anything. They've also let us know that video underscore games now works. Oh my God. No way. Yes. That's the best. So thanks guys. (laughs) That's hilarious. But yeah, if you use that code, you'll get 10% off anything in the store, including the album. Yeah. Including influx. Um, speaking of which, um, we wanted to play another track from it that we liked. Um, I chose this one. Um, this is Iridescence by Marius Masaller. It's the first track on the album. And here you go. Uh, so the composer, Marius Masaller, is... A video game, I don't know if I'm probably pronouncing that totally incorrectly, 
Um, he's a video game composer who did the music to Star Command, um, which is a game that I backed on Kickstarter a while back, um, and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, I like this track because it's so- I, I like it as an album opener because it sounds like a sweeping kind of hopeful track from a really earnest animated film. Um, like there's little bits of chiptune stuff in there, but I like that it's. I, I like that this album spans such a wide diversity of styles, and I thought this was a cool example of that. Yeah, so cool. Uh, thanks, Brave Wave. Go to store.bravewave.net and check out Influx. Yep, use discount code video underscore games. It's two words. Wow. Nick Brecken, John Q Video Games. I don't want to be that guy. Your name is John Q Video Games. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're, you're not called that enough to hate it. <laughs> so I was called that once. That's enough. I can't generate. Imagine, John, imagine someone this. called me that once in my life. John Q. Video. Imagine games. if people called you and video I... games all the time. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. Think uh, about that. <laughs> yeah, I would run into a wall over and over again. <laughs> you would gyrate wildly. Yeah, <laughs> and then catch yourself by the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you remember, people used to call you that, though, right? John Q. Video games. It was just once. Oh, really? Was it was when I left. Ever? Oh, what? Yeah. Was what? it like we miss Nick, John Q? The, yeah, John they were Q like, oh yeah, albums? like yeah, like yeah. It, I wish that John Q. Video games was on, so they <laughs> talked about games. That's really confusing. But now that I don't know. Instead, they just got that guy video games. <laughs> yeah. He talks about nothing. <laughs> Never talks about video games. <laughs> Thanks also to Hulu Plus for sponsoring us this week. Um, some of you guys, or probably a lot of you, probably know Hulu. It's a television and movie streaming service online. And Hulu Plus is their like paid sort of more... Uh, more stuff version. More, yeah, it's their more stuff <laughs> version where uh, you get uh, current season episodes of a ton of shows that are on TV, like The Daily Show, which I watch, and Scandal, which Chris watches. Fuck it, I like it. <laughs> I know. Uh, and they've got... I watch that goddamn um, show every week. You love it. You, it's your favorite show. Hulu, I do. Yeah. Um, and they've also got uh, huge back catalog things, like I think they have... I watched a ton of Lost when it was on there. Um, I, Lost they is have, still on there. Um, it's worth mentioning on Hulu Plus, they have uh, the entire back catalog and most recent season of The Thick of It. Which is one of my favorite TV shows ever because Hulu actually co-produced season four of The Thick of It. Oh, crazy! If you haven't seen that show? You should watch it. It's amazing. It's on. You can get it at Hulu Plus. It's, um, it's a British political, uh, like, dark comedy. It's fucking good. And if you don't care about that at all and only care about Doctor Who, you should watch it because the new Doctor Who is in it. <laughs> if that if that alternative is what justifies it too, is, yeah, is, yeah, is in the um, thick of it. Yes, true. Nick excitedly pointed out earlier that they also have the Criterion Collection on there, which yeah. um, I know the the television shows on Hulu have ad breaks, uh, but the movies are ad free. Also, fewer, movies and kids shows. Also, fewer ads on TV shows on Hulu Plus. I've noticed. Okay. Uh, however, if that doesn't entice you, what is the show that they do? Okay. <laughs> so they send us a lot of copy about stuff, and yeah, we're just we, and uh, we haven't read any of their official ad copy yet, except for this line. Uh, yeah, the, the thing they gave us is you'll also get access to originals that you can't get anywhere else. Check out the new show, Deadbeat, a comedy about a pot smoking guy who talks to ghosts. <laughs> so, anyway, huluplus.com slash thumbs. <laughs> what? The I Criterion know. Collection is an amazing thing to have, and a sh- an original comedy about a pot smoking guy who talks to ghosts. <laughs> the um,. All the episodes of that are, in fact, available currently with your Hulu Plus subscription. If you sign up using HuluPlus.com slash thumbs, you get two weeks free to check it out, which I think is twice as much as an extra week over the usual free trial. Yep, HuluPlus.com slash thumbs. Thanks, guys. Is that the Flintstones? No, it's just riffing. (laughs) <laughs> we are but it was also the Flintstones. <laughs> oh, that? Yeah, the vitamins. That's not the Flintstones. That's the Flintstones vitamins theme song. <laughs> oh, the Flintstones, right. The Hanna Barbera. We're the Flintstones kids. <laughs> I'm actually amazed there never was a Flintstones kids cartoon. Yeah, you're right. Because there was an everything babies and fucking kids right. version. That's true. The Flintstones kids presented by Flintstones kids vitamins. Yeah. Remember Flintstones kids vitamins? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are we are them. We're the Flintstones adults. We grew up. <laughs> we grew up. 
we're here. It's a situation where uh, the uh, Sean Vanneman vitamin does not exist because Nick Vanneman Brecken and Sean vitamin. Vanneman are too similar in shape. <laughs> the way that there's no uh, – there's a um, Wilma but not a Betty Rubble because those two mm. characters are too similar. Right. Is that the case? Yes. <laughs> They're too similar like in silhouette. I see. Yeah. Replaced with Dino. Man, it's crazy how the Flintstones, like, Flintstones is a kid's, chat. it's a kid's cartoon and it still completely reflects <clears throat> the hilarious, shitty sitcom trope 60s. of, like, oaf, oafish, fat-ass husband and right. the, like, the most, ridiculously well-proportioned yeah. wife. Yep. The most extreme version of that is that show Dinosaurs. Do you remember this? I, I remember it, but I don't remember it. You well. remember how there was that baby? There was, yeah, oh, I do, I... <laughs> There was a baby, but there was also just, yeah, like the big oafish fat just dinosaur. Just fat dad man. and hot wife. But it was a yeah. dude in a suit, in a dinosaur suit. Right. Named, I think his name was like Earl or something. Like it yeah. that sounds vaguely familiar. Dino yeah. Chat. Prehistoric yeah. sitcom segment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now our recurring prehistoric sitcom segment. <laughs> Dino Chat. Potato Day. <laughs> <laughs> God, Potato Day. I still really like that as a name for something. I know you like it. I mean, someone registered pota- uh, <clears throat> potato dot today or no there was poda, a poda dot today. Dot today. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? Yeah, God, that was pretty impressive. Because, they outfitted it with content too. It's because Dota today uh, is registered. Mm-hmm. Mm. Someone already fucking got Dota dot today. If we start doing Potato Day, would we read the URL out as poda dot today or pote dot today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you say. <laughs> I couldn't remember the different pronunciations. <laughs> well, it's just if you pronounce. You it say as... pota dot today. I say pote dot today dato. Pote dot today. <laughs> pote dot. Today. Visit us at pota dot today. I think pota we're actually just today. recording the first episode. Of pota. <laughs> Why are we doing idle thumbs? Pota today. This is just recording today, right now. Pota to, today. We just have to alternate every episode between referring it to it as potato day and pota today. <clears throat> nope. Pota. Visit us at pota dot toda. Pota. Why? Thanks again to NatureBox, a uh, snack delivery service. I guess. Is that what you call them? Yeah. They yeah. send you boxes of snacks in the mail according to like whatever size you select, and you can also specify the snacks you like, and they'll send you those ones. Um, we are on our second box, of our second nature box, I guess, um, full of peas, Idle Thumbs pea box. You really like those wasabi peas or something it was in the first, in the first the, one they sent? Um, God, what were the ones I I can't remember. Oh, the ranch peas were the ones I liked. Oh, okay. And then they sent these, um, like... Um, I already ate them all, so I can't find the the bag of it. But they country sent country ranch peas. Well, country ranch peas are delicious. The barbecue peas are delicious. I ate um, all those like pepper chick. The peppery chick. I just tried them all for the first time. Yeah, They're Nick delicious. had never Nick had never had these before. Yeah, they're really good. Um, they sent us the like seaweed rice pops, which are pea shaped, but not technically peas. Yeah, they sent us the pea themed containers. Yeah, there's like yeah, it's, but yeah, it's I don't know. They're, Oh, the garlic mandarin peas. That was the <laughs> holy grail that I wanted. <laughs> That's what you and love. they were totally my favorite ones when they got here. Anyway, naturebox.com slash thumbs. You get 50% off uh, your first one. Yeah. They're really good. Check them out. Yep. That's pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good, says Nick Brecken. Naturebox.com slash thumbs. All right, you guys ready to do this ad? We should just do it while eating Naturebox snacks. It's fine. It's fine. You're... It sounds bad in the ear. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're. I heard we're back. We are I back heard that from someone. It was me. Yes, we've sailed that sea of advertisements, and we are now back <laughs> to talk about video games. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about a video game. It's it's an iOS game. Mm-hmm. It might be on other systems. I don't actually know. What's it called? Um, it's called Async Corp. A S Y N C, like asynchronous. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had it sitting on my phone for a while now, um, and I was on. Uh, I was gone for, in Hawaii a couple weeks ago, as you guys probably remember. Like, I'm sure everyone remembers how I wasn't on the episode two weeks ago. Uh, but on the flight back, I was looking for something to play, and I just loaded this up, having downloaded it and not played it like one does with video games. Um, 
and then it started pulling me in in a in, in pretty intense way. And then I realized that it is a game that would also probably be Chris Ramo destroying. Oh, really? Yes. Async Corp is a tile-based I'm buying it right now. Puzzle game. 99 cents. Fuck it. Um, <clears throat> what? No, it's great. The way that... Okay, so the game has um, two... I think it's like four by six grids of squares. One on the left side of the screen, one on the right side of the screen. And the the squares can be three... One of three different colors. It starts off as just... Um, oh, actually, it's four different colors. I'm sorry. It starts off as cyan, maroon... Uh, magenta and black as the four things. Mm-hmm. So, what you try? Wait, so they, they missed a CMYK opportunity. Cyan mer- magenta, cyan magenta, yellow, black. Sorry, I said magenta maroon or something. Oh. It's, it is CMYK. Oh, nice. Um, so you can you can only do one thing, which is you can swap a tile from one side to the other side. If that swap will then will create a group of four. Or will add on to a group to like to make it a bigger rec- like rectangular shape. So like if you have a two by two of yellow and then above it there is there is a yellow and you put a yellow next to that, mm-hmm. that would be a valid move because it would turn it into a two by three. Mm. So you can move a piece you swap a left and right piece and you have to create or and grow quads on either of the two sides. Um and that's that's fine. And then also, once you've grown one of them, you can tap it and it disappears and, the, and new blocks fall in to take its place. Oh, my God. Someone – okay. I just downloaded this game. Yeah. Someone in a bar – I okay. I flew to New York one time and mentioned on Twitter that I was in SFO going to New York City. And when I landed, I had a tweet from someone who said, hey, come hang out with us at a bar. Someone I didn't know. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And I, I went to the village – to go hang out with these people. And one of them showed me this game on his iPhone. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it wasn't done yet. I think it was a game he was making. Oh, crazy. It was this game. Hmm. Yeah. So it, it, I could be remembering that wrong. I'm sorry, dude, if I'm like making that up. Or maybe it was your friend and he, he had this game. Like, I don't know. So I remember someone showing me this game in development in New York at a bar one time. It, it has uh, multiple modes, but the one that I've been playing the most is um, it's not the first one listed in the UI, but it's the one called Async. And I've not yet completed it because I'm bad at this game. And I'm sure Chris would fucking destroy it in a second. But the objective of the async mode of async corp is to fill up one side or the other in full with one color four times. And it becomes increasingly tough because at first you can sort of play both sides of the board and sort of try to fill up different colors and just see what ends up being in your favor. And then you're like, oh, cool. I made one entire side of yellow. Clear it. And then you can't go for yellow anymore yellow pieces are then basically just toxic or are only valuable for trading back and forth yeah. because you're trying to get magenta cyan and black but then by the end we're like fuck i just need to make i've not ever completed my fourth table in this game but i've i've already dumped hours into this stupid game yeah and it also has it has other modes one of which is uh, a more sort of standard make x number of matches before time runs out um this one i don't know it's Given your enjoyment of threes sure. and things mm-hmm. like this, yeah. Uh, no, I remember liking it when I played it in that circumstance. So I'm, I'm sure I'll like it. It also predates also. threes thing of there being faceless tile blocks that then literally have this exact Become same style faces, of like wacky yeah. faces that uh, have slightly different personalities as it gets bigger. Um, yeah, but. Uh, I don't. It's a hard game to des- to describe, but if you if you're playing things like threes and are looking for another game like them, <laughs> <laughs> sure, this one is. It looks like this has some kind of fictional wrapper where like you're. An- yeah, it's called Async Corp because you're a worker at Async Corp. So the main menu kind of is a little bit of a UI, like a desktop UI, and you the different game types are actually different tasks that you as the worker are completing, but that. Mm. It's not that rel. It's kind of like Assassin's Creed kinda, Four. Yeah, sort of. You know. It's got. It's um. You actually work at Animus Corporation, but it's kind of. <laughs> you're in a corrupt. This is the, this is the game on your your Animus iPad that yes. you play in this between is, meetings. Yeah, this is this this is the second screen experience for Assassin's Creed Four right. Async Corp. Mm-hmm. Um, 
no, I don't know. It's uh, <clears throat> it's one of the games of this kind that seems incredibly simple, and then the more that you play it, the more you realize someone actually put a fair amount of thought into right. it. And it's also a really just very polished. Um, it's not as flashy as Threes is about it, but it's sure. it's uh, it's pretty clean. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, this game is. I already know it's good. <laughs> I already beat it. No, I just mean it's weird. It's crazy that you bring it up because I, it like, I, it's gave me this weird flashback to that. So like that evening is weird. To that time when you thing. invented it in a bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, Shyamalan. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, cool. That is actually what would make it an Assassin's Creed-esque yeah, story, I think. Right. If it turns out that... The credits roll and you, you made you that game. As you plunge into this, it's noticed your uh, Game Center account is Chris Ramo, and then it somehow includes content from the time that you saw the game in a bar. <laughs> and then it asks you to rate it. But that's actually it just trolling you for an App Store rating, which you dismiss. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is there an iOS version? There's no way there's an iOS or mobile version of that Assassin's Creed game, but if that conceit fucking shows up on a system that has rate this game <laughs> dialogue boxes, oh, no. do not rate them. Do not. You're just <laughs> contributing to the problem. <laughs> yeah, does it have a no thanks button also in Assassin's Creed 4? <laughs> to rate the missions? <laughs> It'd be so good. Rate this mission one to five stars. No uh, thanks. Nah, no, you, can, you don't have to do it. You can skip it. Yeah. Does it say no thanks, though? That's the text that it I needs. Don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Ask me again and later. Yeah. Turn off notifications. Um, anyway, sorry, whatever. Async, I have not a lot to say about it other than to describe it because I don't have a wacky story about how it destroyed my life. Yeah. Um, I'll save that for... It just destroyed your vacation. It didn't. It made my plane ride home really good because I played a bunch of it. Cool. I was playing a different iOS game that I got stuck in and mad at. Oh, yeah? I was playing was Black Bar and I got super pissed because oh. I couldn't figure out one arbitrary screen. Uh-huh. So I'm that's that's what made me look for other games that I had that didn't require the internet, <laughs> right. and then I ended up just playing that instead for the rest of the flight and being bad at it. Wait, so how did you get it if you weren't? Oh, because you already I had already it had phone. it. Just yeah, yeah, sitting yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Some guy at a bar told me to put it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, that's all that I have to talk about. Cool, one Sweet. phone game. You guys want to do some robot news? We haven't done robot news in a while. It's because there hasn't been. Okay. That's not true, because last week we talked about how there's a robot in our That's office true. rolling around That's that our true. faces can go on, which Nick almost crashed. Oh, yeah, Nick. I didn't crash You pressed it. a turn I button, and then it tripped it on a cord. I caused to crash. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out of here, because you were playing with the robot, and it just looked like a robot was going crazy out of the office, because like what that thing has a uh, like <laughs> Segway-style yeah. gyroscopic yeah. Uh, base. So when it playing with it. When, it, playing with when it fucking tries to catch itself, was, but it can't. Was, I was playing with its sense of self-worth. It's so good at balancing itself, but it starts moving so fast. Like, it looked like the robot was enraged <laughs> yeah, and well, was throwing a fit. Well, was there was just... that time, and then there was the time where it just started slamming into the wall. <laughs> like, it just face first. No, that was the speed. end. That was the end of that. Oh, I guess that was just the end Because I walked it, out yeah. and I saw it because we put that video game's t-shirt on it because it has a little hanger for clothes. God. <laughs> swinging around just like it looked like a muppet that was enraged and then yeah it, it did it by just like smacking its face into it looked the wall like a, a broom times. handle just like <laughs> just dunking against the wall yeah just crazy. full tilt anyway that's not the real robot news the real robot news is that google bought a fucking quadcopter <laughs> drone company yeah so uh yeah which is it's bonkers so it's fine um let's see here a lot of people sent this to us this week um Google buys Titan. a lot of robots try to delete those emails. <laughs> Google buys Titan Aerospace, makers of solar powered high altitude drones. The Wall Street Journal reports that Google is purchasing Titan Aerospace, makers of high altitude solar powered drone aircraft. Wait, and drone aircraft? It's not quadcopter stuff. It's no, like it's aircraft. They're no. fucking crazy planes. No. It's, yeah. Well, Wait, that's another part of the Terminator opening. Like, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And, I thought and, it was okay, just quadcopters. This, this is the part no, that blew my mind. Even like this blew my mind even more than the previous half of the sentence and a company that the report notes facebook was also in talks with earlier yeah. this year why are the internet companies competing to buy drone companies it's why do all these companies want drones they're using them to broad i don't sure they are they're, it's so weird. they're buying them to, benevolent to broadcast surely. robots surely. onto our houses <laughs> makers of autonomous self-propelled drones and autonomous self-propelled drone big dog mounts google said the titan team will work closely with google's project loon That's which is building large airships. high altitude balloons that send internet yeah. signals to areas project of the world that loon, are currently not online balloon. Uh... <laughs> titan says its drones will be able to collect real-time high-resolution images of the earth and of you 
Uh, mm-hmm. Carry other atmospheric sensors and support voice and data services. The type of technology support. could also help other Google businesses, including its maps division. Sure. Yeah, okay. Well, that's it's actually, just to help us with our maps. That's actually a valid application for this. If you have autonomous planes, I imagine that it would be then a relatively, like, I was going to say cheap, but not cheap, but relatively mathematically quantifiable operation for then snapping all of your own map data. I know. But, I'm just saying that's where it starts. <laughs> They have it. They have a right. But Google, slippery. A it Google can also statement. drop l- l- looms, loons. <laughs> it can also drop autonomous floating surveillance devices and robots. Mm-hmm. There's a there's an this additional just, there's a statement. Just where there's like Google the machine for, army, and there are just like different characters within that army, like in yeah, Terminator. Is, yeah, where yeah. there's like the big robot guy, then they're like the little guys, and like this yeah, is just like the blimp airship with like right, the well, little, they, with it, little like it, you know like anemones just floating like around, around it, it, you know, yeah. just like circling it, you know, so you mm-hmm. can't attack it. Yeah, these things are going to yeah. launch out of a bay. In yeah, the, right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's still early days, but atmospheric satellite. This is a Google's statement. It's still early days, but atmospheric satellites could help bring internet access to millions of people and help solve other problems, including disaster relief and environmental damage. Wait, what do those have to like do with drones that fly quickly? They they broadcast the internet. <laughs> you have Wi-Fi now. You don't Dis- anymore. Disaster relief and environmental damage, like deforestation. Disaster relief. What does that mean? Dropping things on people? Interesting. Dropping food packs on people. What else can be dropped on people? <laughs> Overpopulation. Disaster causing. Disaster relief. <laughs> deforestation. <laughs> Forestation. Deforestation. Good surveillance. Bad surveillance. Uncontrolled birth birth rates. <laughs> Smaller drone deployment. Uncontrolled birth rate. <laughs> Disaster control, population control. Wait, did we say disaster control, disaster relief, population control? Wait, did we say population control? Population just relief. Control. <laughs> We're going to relieve you of this burden. Of your, just, of it's your, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're fucked, obviously. Autonomous murder of military dissonance. <laughs> dissonance? Di- dis- dissonance. Of, of human yeah. dissonance. Human dissonance. <laughs> of life dissonance. Yeah. Anyway. Apparently, yeah. Mm-hmm. Facebook got Oculus, though. <laughs> they settled. Yeah. They were going for crazy autonomous Also, Amazon company. wants to build drones. So they killed someone. Titan That's Aerospace's website has now just been deleted and just covered with a big page that says... It's got a with, gif of a skull laughing. Soon, like yeah, a, right. Of a coming fucking soon. chrome skull <laughs> with flame reflected in it. <laughs> just... But none of the other subpages on it even load anymore. They're all just 404. It was a startup. Um, and now on just it, just, it just has a big Google and Titan logo on the front page. Weird. Also, Google Robots is moving into an office like mere blocks away from our office. Yeah. It's across the street from Dear Mom. So yeah. maybe now the like that block is now becoming the most concentrated talked about block on Idle Thumbs. <laughs> That's Basically, <true. laughs> if Clint Hawking's new Amazon team somehow is making... The true Far Cry 2 successor in the uh, on the next corner of that intersection, right. we have to move back over there. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Everything is there. Yeah. Also, yeah, we never haven't mentioned that, have we? That Clint Hawking is making a new game. He was one of the. He's got an, one of the. He's one of the Amazon teams for the Amazon like Fire thing. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Fire TV. Yeah, those guys have suddenly announced a whole bunch of games and stuff, um, but I don't know anything about. Obviously, Clint's here. Oh, they're, no, the no. Titan Aerospace drones don't look super malicious. No. They never do. The drones, like... They're, they're just, like, kind of like floaty guys. Military attack drones that actually well, are true. just deployed and... Yeah, this I isn't meant, actually I meant, just wreck I a kind person. Of, Those things look fucking the, terrifying. These look yeah. like gliders. They knowing look what I knew about this, I was like, yeah, this qualifies as robot news. Yes! Yeah, it obviously I mean, it does. does, but it's not... That's how they get you. Hey! Okay, Almost. these are less terrifying than I thought. Far these less look terrifying. very majestic. They're very like They're just sleek. blimps and and just it's just like a nice day in Holland. I it's mean, a, this is not. This it's is a really glider. not like. It's a, right, it's guys, a pretty okay. glider. Okay. <laughs> it's a pretty. Glider. It's a pretty. <laughs> pretty <glider. laughs> As my voice is digitized yeah. and synthesized uh-huh. and yep. by an overhead a drone passing. Right. I was imagining right, a yeah, laser. It's, it's the Gene like, Hackman <laughs> conversation situation yeah, where it's going yeah. by and you just and then. Uh, a robot thumb is taken off the button <laughs> <laughs> because these robots because it knows that you're not a threat also these robots bother to build a thumb that can press a button they were just, <laughs> the, the google sentient robot army was also entranced 
with the uh, yeah. the threes robot from last week. So they've right. decided to now build, but it, it doesn't digits, pr- articulate articulate. Yeah, it doesn't digits. lift off the button. It just goes <laughs> and weirdly like gyrates and spins on one <laughs> axis off the button. Yeah, um, because I said, oh, it looks like it's just a cute glider. So these things are just cute. It's not. It's not bad. It's not a robot. <laughs> That's a good point. Their um, key art does feature lens flares glistening off of the robot. It's true. Anyway, whatever. Everyone's really excited about these. <laughs> okay. The thing that would be fantastic is if that Google barge <laughs> rolled into a city. <laughs> and the like door a, of it opened. A thousand fucking things yeah, like fly 3, yeah. of these fucking things. <laughs> it's just <so>. a carrier. <laughs> <laughs> and they all sound like that? They all sound like, like bees. Dogs. They just sound <laughs> like bees. I, they probably there. aren't prop based, but if they are, <laughs> <it's> a, <laughs> they probably are, actually. <laughs> but. <laughs> If that happens, but it's just masked with the one big dog that was uh, worming <laughs> right. its way out of there, where children are just like <gasps> pointing at these beautiful. Uh, right, yeah, meanwhile, like eight of them are carrying a big dog. dog. Yeah. yeah. On yeah, was, Oh, God, yeah, eight of them. Eight of just, yeah. They're bearing just, a big dog aloft. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, they are prop based. Yes. Of course. Oh, yeah. man. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thousands of them looking like some sort of like Swarming anime opening of, title right. sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where they spend all the money animating like weird paper and airplanes blowing around and stuff, and a bad song plays. They'd also, out of huge like PA Eastern system. Bloc propaganda <laughs> PA speakers, play fucking shitty anime closing credits music as five thousand of these robots come flying out of a barge, and one big dog comes out. But that big dog, of course, leaves a little like stamp footprint in the mud, and then some water right. pools in it, and a rose lands in it, yep. and then it turns to black and white, and then it's over. And then we turn to dead. <laughs> we turn into skulls, <laughs> flames, which are also crushed Rotating. by the big dog. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then it's probably the fifth Terminator movie or however. Oh, it's. And then probably like. Wait, did what? you read about about like Arnold Schwarzenegger's press quote for the new Terminator movie? Because he's not the governor of anything anymore, so he can just <laughs> fucking be in a Terminator movie full, like whole hog. But his quote was so outrageous. Oh man, I did not hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> it was just he said something that um, ah, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna find it. He he obviously said a long quote that then just got got cut down to be like Schwarzenegger will play aged Terminator. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and then, cause, and then he's you know he's like oh they made of human skin so they age or whatever. But like oh <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it is aged Terminator. Arnold reveals Terminator has aged in new movie. <laughs> Arnold, comma, aged, comma, reveals Terminator has also aged. But yeah. He's excited about how, because it's made of human skin above the robot, that if they hang out, they become old. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, whatever. He's, it is Terminator 5, and Arnold is confirmed uh, to be an aged Terminator. Good. But that film will open with that bullshit I just described about uh, big dogs and anime. <laughs> The way the character is written, it's a machine underneath. Yeah. It's this metal skeleton, but above that, it's human flesh, and the Terminator's flesh ages, just like any other human being's flesh. Maybe not as fast, but it definitely ages, says the former governor. Yeah, says Governor Schwarzenegger. California Governor Emeritus. <laughs> I guess you can't be a Governor Emeritus. Well, he is one. Wouldn't that be really demeaning to all presidents if they were called President Emeritus? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that mean though that like you would be your previous you're still president kind of who's like still sitting here? Yeah. Yeah. You're like a yeah. You're kind of a weird uh, sort of semi permanent. Imagine advisor if position. the United States government included President Emeritus as a job where you're just like, well, that's not what I would do. Just like, <laughs> out of the back of every meeting, like, fuck you. You're taking it through. Your time's up. God, yet another example of something that would have been introduced. Well, that's actually kind of like the deal with Supreme Court justices, right? Like when it was determined constitutionally. That Supreme Court justices should serve until they die. People didn't live till they were like a hundred, right? At least not very often. So that the like the chamber of presidents emeritus would just, as generations go on, just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Till till you, you know, say the chamber of presidents emeritus. Yeah. Okay. Good. So like a century from now, it would just be like twenty bickering right, old just, guys. <laughs> we had accidentally form a house of lords out of fucking right. presidents emeritus. <laughs> out of four presidents. Yeah. <laughs> 
Gross. Hopefully they just call it the Hall of Presidents and then also include the Disney World and the Tron <laughs> old presidents who can just repeat their like 30 lines. It's just Futurama at this point. Yeah. yeah. But with also with living... Also with the actual former presidents, yes. And then also the sitting president is just like, fuck, it's President's Emeritus <laughs> Day. It's fucking yeah. Tuesday afternoon. What if all decisions... What if all presidential, like... Uh, uh, like to go listen to George Bush Jr., if, George Bush Sr., and an animatronic Ronald Reagan who can only deliver one speech talk to what me if, about policy. What if every time the president signed off on a bill or something, it had to be voted on by all presidents? It must be notarized. Like, by, no, like what if what if oh. that became just a body? Like a, <laughs> the executive branch just became another deliberative body <laughs> like the <laughs> legislative branch. I'm the president of the presidents. <laughs> When my eight years are up, or four, I guess, if I do a bad job of ruling over everyone else that you voted for, <laughs> I'll also <laughs> still be here. I'll just, I'll just keep hanging out. Like, if you were impeached... To Activist wonder- presidents are forming a cabal <laughs> to put... Like, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about how Google bought that glider company. Yeah, anyway, I think we're talking about something else now. Um, David Huang writes... FTL advanced right, president's edition. emeritus. Hey thumbs. Oh, wait, up. what did he actually say? He said, "Hey thumbs." No, 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 no. The email. I, I. Oh, he, FTL advanced edition. FTL AE. Yes, after Earth. FTL beyond Earth. Um, hey thumbs. I've been playing the new update for FTL, and I have a story to share. One of the new additions is a species called called the Lanius. Oh, something. They don't require oxygen oxygen to survive, and in fact, drain it out of any room they're in. The Lanius ship starting crews two Lanius and one human. It also comes equipped with a new cloning bay. Cloning bay? The cloning bay replaces the med bay and automatically creates a clone of crew member if they die, as well as healing a slight amount every jump. That's awesome. I needed one more achievement to unlock the B layout for the Lanius ship, so I decided to try for the one where you have to get to Sector 8 without using your oxygen levels going over 20%. Oh, crazy. Previous attempts at this were foiled by the new hacking system being used in my door control, which automatically shuts all the doors and caused my oxygen levels to rise before I realized what was going on. So to prevent this, I turned off my oxygen in addition to venting the ship. Also, these updates sound rad, also. I know. Yeah. Um, all the, like, interjections of, wow, that sounds yeah. cool, are me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so in order to prevent this, I turned off my oxygen in addition to venting the ship. This caused my human crew member to slowly asphyxiate, only to be resurrected by the ship's cloning bay, and shortly after, slowly asphyxiate all over again. <laughs> it, it created a horrible narrative in my mind where the poor human crew member was repeatedly killed over over again, while his two other crew members simply watched him die again and again. He's created the prestige. Yeah. Then during one battle, the cloning bay took some damage and went offline. If a crew member dies while the bay is offline, they will die permanently if the bay is not brought back online quickly enough. I sent my human crew member over there to repair the bay, but he was unable to accomplish the task in time and perished for the final time. My internal narrative concluded that he was tired of his endless cycle of death and rebirth, so he intentionally failed his task to end his nightmare. His sacrifice was a noble one, though, because I did manage to get the achievement and unlock the other ship layout, which means others of his kind won't be forced to endure his Sisyphean existence. Um, so as for the actual question, have any of you played the new FTL update yet? Keep up with the great work, David, a.k.a. Secret Asian Man. Um, P.S. I forgot to mention that by an amazing coincidence, the crew named the human crew member Brecken. What? Why was that not? Why didn't you? <laughs> well, I forgot my amazing you coincidence. Forgot this mention. story about it's this guy email. you can dying and getting killed over and over again in his futile life was Nick Brecken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PPS, the vinyl record is fantastic and is tempting me to buy a turntable. Um, if, by the way, if you want one of those, the Idle Thumbs vinyl records, go to store.idlethumbs.net because we have a single digit number of them left. Um, so they're going to run out soon. Um, Unless you're a Kickstarter backer. If you're a Kickstarter case, backer, still you somewhere. still have yours, but please do that as soon as you can. Yeah. Yep. If you, yeah, if you are a Kickstarter backer, I know Chris just said this, but go and get one of those because we're scarce on main inventory, but we're still flush on Kickstarter inventory because... Yeah, as we I all mean, know from back ideally, ideally, all the Kickstarter people would would um, redeem theirs, and then we can figure out if we have any actual ones left and yep. sell them. Anyway, um, uh, I have not, I, I played this for like half an hour, forty five minutes today. When I remembered that it was out, this is FTL Advanced Edition. So if you already own FTL on PC, this is a free expansion. They also released it on iPad, and I've heard that it's really good on iPad. Which FTL's makes... got to be good on iPad, Yeah, right? it makes sense. It's all like pointing at things and clicking on them. It's all um, poignant things and clicking on them. <laughs> this, apparently it is. Um, uh, yeah, I, I actually bought it on iPad. The nice thing is that they've oriented it, they, they've shifted the UI a little bit so that you use just two thumbs and you're just grasping oh, cool. the sides of it, so nice. it actually works pretty well. Oh, that's good. 
Um, so yeah, I got the update on PC and it, I mean, it seems good, but it's one of those sort of civilization style expansions where it just stuff is added throughout the game. It's not as though there's like a new, new mode or yeah. like a new level or something. That's cool so. though. That's such a cool, no, no, it's like, good. For it's this game. Totally. A Especially game hearing all those again. examples coming up in that guy's email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started playing it again today and it was weird getting back into it because I, the year that game came out, which I think was 2012, I played more of it than any other game probably. Um, so I've played a lot of that game, but I also haven't played it in like a year and a half at this point. So mm-hmm. it it's one of those games that really rewards familiarity. Um, so I had that kind of like getting back on a bike after years experience, you know, where it's like, oh, I remember how this goes, but it feels kind of shaky. Um, right. But I want to play more of it with the new expansion for sure. Um, let's see. Christopher Taylor writes, the adjective super. Dear Thumbs, I just started listening to Idle Thumbs for the first time. I binged pretty hard listening backwards from episode 149-ish to 120-ish in about a month. Around episode 135, I found myself using terms like Baroque far more often than I used to, but I didn't really attribute it to anything specific. Sorry. However, however, this morning was different. My operations management professor called on me to define and explain the term concentric diversification. Under ordinary circumstances, concentric diversification is the the process of expanding a company's product offerings to a market closely related, related to the one it's already in like Apple movings from phone, phones to tablets. Instead of that simple explanation, the last month of listening to Idle Thumbs took over, and I described it as, quote, a super interesting way of describing the arcane methods by which many well-known companies expanded to similar markets. It's usually super good if a company can do it successfully. The professor responded, why is it so super? I replied, what do you mean? What's super? He says, you just described concentric diversification as both super interesting and super good. I was taken aback. I didn't hear those words come out of my mouth. I let out some stupid response and sat there and thought, recollecting uh, recollecting about my conversations over the last week, featuring me using super to demonstratively describe almost everything. I tried to let it go and return to the presence. I I drove home after class ended up, up, uh, after class ended up, gee, I can't read it right now. I drove home after class ended, opened up Elder Scrolls Online, and fired up episode 151, Piercing the Fourth fourth Dimension. I was just casually questing when the group starts discussing phrases banned from writing. Paraphrasing, Sean explains that How You Holding Up was banned from Walking Dead, and Chris responds with, That's super good. (laughs) (laughs) And then it hit me. (laughs) Hope you're having a nice Friday, Chris. P.S. F. Nick Brecken. Oh. Oh, man. What he means to say is congrats, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. He meant fantastic Nick Brecken. Yeah. Super Nick Brecken. Yep. <laughs> Super Nixon Brecken. Oh, Super, Super Nick good. Brecken, 64. Um, Richmond Conciso. That's an interesting name. That's a cool name. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Conciso, perhaps. Uh, writes, Hi, Thumbs. I've been a listener for about as long as I first listened to podcasts, around 2009. I'd like to thank you for all the hours of entertainment. Here's my question. Do you frequent gaming community websites like Gamers with Jobs or NeoGAF? Have you ever made lasting friendships on such websites? Or have you ever made a friend just playing a game? I don't know whether I'm socially inept online, but try as I might, it's hard to take someone named Mr. Puppy Bunny or lick my expletive seriously as someone I'd ever befriend. Cheers. We are all friends because we're of all the that. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. all that because of ShackNews.com. Yeah. And, I know, Idle, well, and Idle Thumbs. No, I knew Chris because of Adventure Gamers, yeah, Jake, and I right. knew Nick. I hired Nick yeah. for his first job out of college through the Shack News community, yeah. and yeah. because he had written an article for the original Idle Thumbs yeah, website. So, but only because I saw you post on ShackNews.com. Right. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just saying, like, it's yeah, le- it, it goes the, all the way back. It's yeah. way less the case now for me, but definitely, like, right at the end of high school, and like a sort of band of a couple, year, like, starting and ending a couple of years either side of college. Yeah. A ton of my friendships and just sort of like social yeah. circle yeah. came it's, entirely from the internet, from like hanging out in a very specific community or communities for a long time, mm-hmm. like IRC chat rooms and web forums or people with whom I ran websites. Like that's just the people who were my friends. In my case, it's always been, a, it's always been, it's been different to that for me, but, mm-hmm. but like in my case, I've directly met relatively few people that way, but the ones I have have been super important. I've been what? Super oh. duper, super, very important relationships. So like Jake 
it's weird. I was thinking about this recently, actually, coincidentally, before we got this email, like, I don't know, a week or two ago. Like, meeting you specifically ruined your fucking is, life. It's the thing that essentially created the life I have. I now. know, sorry. It's fine. Uh, like, we made Idle Thumbs together with also with some other people, and that has essentially led to my entire professional career fully, um, as well as, like, essentially to like meeting Nick as well. Definitely Sean, um, my girlfriend, um, like it's a, you're the nexus of my, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause like, yeah. Also Steve Gaynor. I met Steve Gaynor yes. because of the internet. Yep. Um, yeah. Basically all of the friends that I have at this point with a couple of very specific exceptions that go way back in my life are people who I met and became incredibly close friends with because of the internet, like in the early two thousands and people who I've met just because I work with them or live in San Francisco. And that's mm -hmm. like, and then yeah, yeah. A couple friends who just go infinitely far back to when I was a small person. Right. But yeah, yeah in my case, it didn't start until I was in college. Which is when I met you. But before that, I never had the experience. Yeah, it's funny because I don't seek out any of that sort of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea if it still happens. Like, do people hang out on NeoGAF and then have, like, yeah, GAF meets where people go and hang out together? For sure. Well, Idle Thumbs people do that. I mean, Idle Thumbs people, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, we don't, when we don't organize our own Idle Thumbs meets, Idle Thumbs, the community just organizes That's their own. That's true. Those are awesome. Because, yeah, there was, I think, an Idle Thumbs meetup at PAX at, East. At well, there was one oh, at DC that we couldn't go to. But, yeah. yeah. I don't know. They, yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I always feel bad for not going to the Idle Thumbs ones when I can't make it. We go to most of them. I mean, I feel like we've been to most of the ones at, our, at events know. we've gone to. I know. But yeah. I yeah it's weird. I, like, I used to go hang out with you guys at Shack News community meetups at people's houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those mm. were really fun, actually. Yeah, those were good. Except for that one where that girl got super drunk and kept demanding we go to an Irish oh, pub or Irish drink an Irish coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yep it's a very specific uh, request she made it many times oh she also played the first song on the first guitar hero over yeah over it was i love rock time. and roll right Man, oh yeah. no mm -hmm. oh that that party was the first time i ever actually really played guitar hero in I any think I, I think me too in any material way and i was like wow this game is awesome also i now know why this game is annoying like i like <laughs> the whole spectrum of guitar hero yeah, was revealed yeah, yeah, yeah. in one party by just ha making sure that it was on the entire time mm -hmm. whatever that was fun mm-hmm yeah, those were good. Internet. Yep. Hmm. Nick's live journal. I hate you so much. <laughs> you have ruined my life. <laughs> God, I can't remember. Somebody tweeted at me. I'm not. I'm not doing. What are you this. telling? Me Where doing? are you going? I'm not. What are you doing with this? No. No. Nope. Nope. Eh. Eh. What's next, mail, Chris? <laughs> Brecken's live journal. God damn it. Dear Nick. Fuck Nick. Fuck off. <laughs> Dear Nick, I was that guy on Twitter that one time. Please uh, tell that story again. Oh. <laughs> uh, Remember how I was talking about the good parts of the internet and then I accidentally derailed it all? Like how you made that robot go crazy earlier? That was that was just uh, a premonition. <sighs> you will be that wacky, angry broomstick robot. <laughs> but the wall will be my face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> are we moving on yes okay. we've been done for a while we have been okay, done for well, a while. we have one more email and we close it out oh sorry it's a long one it's not one that we're going to respond to it's just an interesting anecdote paul meekin writes hey thumbs i was listening to the fantastic discussion on south park roger ebert game criticism and i figured i'd toss my two cents into the mix i worked for i worked for roger ebert for seven months during the short-lived revival of at the movies that was on pbs and hosted by um ignatiev uh Vichinev's, uh Vishnevetsky, I don't know how to pronounce that name, and AP movie critic Christy Lemire. I got the gig after starting my own movie review show in college, The Price of Admission, which has made over 100 episodes in the last couple of years. I'd been also reviewing movies for Streetwise, a magazine sold by homeless people, and Star Pulse, which was an entertainment site. Um, it was kind of a slumbug millionaire thing. Everything I did for the college show ended up applying and helping the nationally televised show, uh, which had a very, very small production staff, to the point where the movie clips weren't in HD until I came along and helped with some codex stuff. Beyond the fact that I had access to every movie ever made, um, check out Passion, which has John Turturro dancing the entire time. The thing I looked forward to most was to possibly pick Robert e Ro Roger Ebert's brand about video games. 
I had seen the man during screening, but due to his cancer and lack of lower jaw, he was unable to speak. Um, he was in the middle of promoting his memoir during the time, but in so instead I got to pick the brain of his wife, Chaz. Some takeaways. One, Roger Ebert's favorite game of all time is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. He's also <laughs> reviewed games before on a lark. Good fact. I know that's true because I read a review one time Roger Ebert wrote of this, like, crazy interactive museum experience or something. Weird. And it had, no, like... He he used to occasionally just review video games, but they were like weird video games. I don't know. It's a fascinating like the Versailles interactive CD-ROM. Yeah, or something shit like that. Like, yeah, shit like that. It's super strange. Um, uh, yeah, I do vaguely remember something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Weird. Uh, that never came up for some reason when yeah. when all the Roger Ebert. No one pulled that review where he hailed Burn Cycle as the <laughs> like. No one pulled review. that review where he talked about how his favorite character is Donatello. <laughs> on the topic of ga- <laughs> on games versus art. A point most missed is that Ebert said only the best movies achieve that particular art status. He made an example in his blog that Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 is a great superhero movie, but not necessarily great art. Um, uh, it's also a thing about Walking Dead that I don't want to go into. Whoa! Um, that's fine. <laughs> it's, no, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Um, he compares, he talks, it's not worth explaining. It's just a long digression. It's fine. Um, three. The difference between games criticism and film criticism is the bubble. For Mr. Ebert, he would hear of various films, but generally speaking, with three to six screenings a week and three to six reviews to write, plus essays, plus blogs, the opportunity to get hyped and keep ahead of news was limited. Conversely, gaming is an enthusiast press. Those who write the most about it care the most and are struggling to make their voices heard, so hype and reputation and such play a far larger role in the digestion of a piece of media than it would for a movie Roger Ebert reviewed. Anyway, I have some good stories and insights into gaming and film criticism I gleaned from the guy, and I've included a picture of myself standing in front of... uh, Ebert's painting of Orson Welles and a naked cherub to to prove I work there and hope a couple of these insights provide a little more clarity into a subject that was kind of scattershot across the internet. P.S. As a new listener, you guys are missing out on iOS. So much good stuff there. Kingdom Rush, I swear to God, feels like a Blizzard game. Um, Yeah, I thought that was an interesting first-hand account. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for writing that in. Also, mm-hmm. thank you to everyone who's been sending in super good reader mail for like, like, it's been a, it's been a, a rash of it good. for a l- rash yeah, we fucking <laughs> fuck, fuck. What? Did I say it's been super good? It said super good reader mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has been. <laughs> the episode, Shut up. The, it, the episode's it's over. Been it super ended, good. Fuck you. It ended on fuck, fuck, fuck. That was the end of the episode. Uh, Sorry. It probably was. <laughs> I wanted to plug the store, but we plugged it up. <laughs> No, we actually should plug the store. Well, we got this super good store. The store's doing fucking fine. We should let Whatever. everybody know that we put up a t-shirt poll for the new shirt that was going to be poll. in <laughs> the store. And yeah, the one that has won. Drum roll, Chris. You're good at music. Drum roll. I'm not sound. out of my mouth. Okay, good. Uh, was the 80s by a large yeah, margin. Yeah, by more than, 50, more than 50% of all votes Yeah, were for the 80s. Yeah, and we had a lot of votes, like a ton, so thank you so much. We'll probably do this again with future shirts. Apparently, even the people in the Fulfillment Center were like, the people who stocked They had a horse in the race. They were like, 80 shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That, is, that, that one. is a coral t-shirt with a neon blue and white Idle Thumbs logo. It's fucking awesome. It's I love super it. good. I am so glad that it won. I am super glad, Chris. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Anyway, uh, it's thanks, up Sean. right now for sale. So what we're going to do is let people order them for like a week or so before we put in our initial run. And then they'll be out to you probably in like three weeks. But then they'll be in the store for a while. So, yeah, if you just go to the Idle Thumbs site, there's a store link at the top. Or yep. you can go to store.idlethumbs.net. Yeah. I think you guys yeah. for voting on shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> no, it's over. It ended when Nick said it was over. Yeah, that's true. For some reason, I was thinking about talking about nothing when walking back from the bathroom. Because, oh, we should talk about Jay Allard. And for some reason, that made me think about Robert Koo. And if he had encountered us in an alternate dimension instead of Penny Arcade, he would have just said, oh, you guys are dumb and have bad ideas. <laughs> and walked away. It would have been really sad. <laughs> look what you've done. Look what's behind you. You're the ruiner. You're, look at Jay. I sit here. You ruined it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs>